Tosca Lee is an award-winning New York Times best-selling author of 11 novels, including the two we'll be talking about today, which is A Single Light and The Line Between. Her work has been translated into a whopping 17 languages as well as being optioned for TV and film. Don't go away, we'll be right back with some more on Tosca Lee and her journey as an author. If you're just joining us, a hearty warm welcome to the Writer's Corner live show. I'm your host, Bridgetti Limbanda in Cape Town in South Africa, and our stream is made possible by StreamYard, Creative Edge, and Be Live Media. A special warm welcome if you are a live viewer on Amazon Live. Great to have you here. And also, if you're watching us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, also a hearty warm welcome to you. Do know that we are monitoring the comments, so do say hello in the comments. Let us know where you are joining us from. Um, I am watching the comments. We will acknowledge you. We'll show you the comments on screen. So please do feel part of the show, and please feel free to ask our author any questions um, as well. We're going to be talking to the award-winning Tosca Lee. She's a New York Times best-selling author, and uh, she's written 11, 11 novels. And today we're going to be talking about two of her novels, A Single Light and The Line Between. But before we bring Tosca onto the show, I want to say a warm welcome to my friend and co-host Mary Elizabeth Jackson. Mary is a special needs and disabilities advocate and also the award-winning author of The Poolicious children's book series. Her books are also available on Amazon as well as Tosca's book that are available on Amazon. Um, Mary writes empowering stories for children. She also writes for the special needs community and I think she's busy with a motivational book for adults and she's in Nashville so great to know where you are joining us from. And with that I'm going to say welcome to Mary. Mary great to have you. Hey, I'm so glad to be here today. I'm so excited about our author and um, getting to spend some time with her this morning and getting to learn, um, you know, what what uh, what her about, you know, just where she's going and all the things that she's got going on and sharing her tips and tricks and all that fun stuff. So I'm excited to have her on here. And yes, I'm here in Tennessee and you are halfway across the world. Let's see, what did we say to Car about Carson? It would take us how long on a boat or swimming <laughs> to get to you from here? A long, a long time if you were swimming, you know, across a couple of oceans, it'll take a long time. Yeah, absolutely. But it's so cool that we get to be here together. So we are, you know, we've been doing this for a while. And we really love, love, love doing this. Absolutely. So a little bit more about our featured author today. Um, if you don't know Tosca Lee, her books are highlighted um, on the carousel in Amazon, if you're watching us on Amazon. Tosca Lee is an award-winning New York Times best-selling author, and she has written 11 novels. And we're going to be talking about A Single Light and the Line Between today on this show. Um, and her work's been translated into 17 languages as well as being optioned for TV and film. And it's and I like that she told us that her geology release was pandemic books. It's mm. always been an interesting time for authors releasing books during the pandemic because the experience is so vastly different to what they know. But let's not waste any more yeah. time and let's get Tosca onto our show for today, shall we? Yes. And if you like thrillers, then you need to tune in for sure, right? Absolutely. Here comes 
Tusker. Welcome Hi. to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having so nice me. Nice to have you. We can't wait to just dive in and ask you Aww. questions and get to know some so just amazing Tosca. So oh. we're so glad you're here. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for, for mm -hmm. joining us. And I want to dive right in. Okay. Um, again, a warm welcome to our viewers on Amazon Live, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, and Twitch, thanks for joining us. So Tosca, tell us a little bit about your journey as a best-selling, award-winning author. Mm -hmm. How has your journey as an author evolved over the years? <laughs> and who's been your biggest supporter and critic? And what have you appreciated about that input into your journey? Well, this has been a really long journey. I started writing when I was a kid and I, I loved writing as a kid and I used to win things and, and do stuff like that. But, you know, I never really thought of writing as something that I would end up doing when I was a young person because I was really focused on becoming a professional ballerina. And that's what my mm. whole life was about. And so I pursued that vigorously until I had an injury as a teenager. And then it became apparent that maybe that was not going to happen. Even this was the 80s. So even in the 80s, you know, ballet is such a competitive world. Um, writing is too. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I, I went off to college and I thought, you know, maybe I'll go into business or do something like that. My parents were like, maybe you should try to be a news anchor or something. And I thought, okay, whatever. Well, I came home from college my freshman year for spring break. I'm the only person I know who comes home to Nebraska for spring mm -hmm. break. And I was talking with my dad and I was talking about one of my favorite novels of all time, which is The Mists of Avalon, which is a really thick book. Um, it's now, oh, I want to say it was probably published in the late 70s or early 80s. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a story about the women behind King Arthur's throne. And I fell in love with it immediately. And I was talking about this book with my dad and about how a great book is like a roller coaster with twists and turns and all these things. And I just blurted it out that day. And I said, I think I'd like to write a novel. And the idea was maybe I could build that kind of emotional roller coaster for somebody else to enjoy. And so my dad made me a deal that day. He said, all right, Tosk, I will pay you what you would have made this summer working at the bank. I was supposed to be a bank teller for the second summer in a row. And I was miserable at this job. Very <laughs> bad. And he said, I will pay you what you would have made this summer as a bank teller. If you write your first novel, do it full time, treat it like a job. Wow. Well, oh, wow. Wow. Who could turn that I down? I supposed to say no. Yes. Right. And I didn't like being a bank teller and I'm bad at adding up numbers. And <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, yes, I'll do it. And so I came home and I wrote my first novel that summer. And nobody told me that a summer is probably not enough time to write a, right. <laughs> you know, sweeping, epic, historical <laughs> novel about right. the Stonehenge people. Um, but I, so I did it cause I didn't know any better and it was a bad novel, you know, I, and I get asked sometimes, are you ever going to go back and publish that? And the answer is a firm no, mm -hmm. um, that thing's never leaving my basement, but that is the only way to really learn how to write a novel is to jump to in, get in and there, just get in there, give it a try. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that was, I wrote that in 1989. So I've been at this for quite a while. Wow. Um, that said, I, I wrote continuously through the 90s. I didn't publish, I didn't sell my first novel, my, the, the one that would become my first published novel until 2006. And my first one came out in two, the following year, 2007. So, you know, I've only been published now for, you know, the last, how many years? I told you I was bad at math. However many years that is. <laughs> so 14 years. <laughs> 14 years. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
but you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So you're only 12. Years. So, you know, right? Yeah. Well, 13. Okay. 13. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my so that's kind of the journey. And, you know, the people who encouraged me were, of course, my father with that special day, um, but also teachers along the way. When I was in school, um, I had teachers encouraging me to write. And and I did, you know, and they, I entered these things, you know, and won these things. But um, but I look back now and teachers were so important to that process. And uh, even later on, I, I went to the uh, writer's workshop in Taos, New Mexico, and, and met a wonderful teacher there. Uh, Daniel Mueller is his name. And, and I've stayed in touch with all of these teachers, and they've, they've been pivotal in my writing life. But today I have oh, to say my wonderful Monday. story. Well, you know, as teachers are so important. My father's a professor too, so oh, so um, you're used to teachers and being. I'm kind used of, to teachers. It's yeah. a big part of our culture and heritage. I'm half Asian, so um, this is something you know you grow up revering your teachers. But my biggest influence today and my biggest encourager today is my husband Brian. So, oh well, that's good. We like yeah. Brian. We're glad that you <laughs> have Brian, right? <laughs> Wonderful. So, you, so glad. You know we. I, it, it's hard, I think, to become a best-selling author, a New York Times best-selling author. And, um, you know, there are people who buy their way in, bribe their way in. You know, people who have a lot of money can buy thousands and thousands of copies and, and give them away and things like that. But, you know, I guess to be a New York Times bestseller, to truly be a good one, is... It, it takes a lot and it's kind of like there's some special ingredients that have to be there in order to make all mm. that happen. Um, even if you're starting from being a nobody, you know, there's got to be some special ingredients there. But so do you have, you know, what are your strategies for staying on top of your game mm. as an author? How do you keep, you know, keep moving up and that next step and moving forward and, you know, what's going to be the next thing in your and what you're going to do and upping your game as you go. Cause we kind of mm. just have to keep doing that. Cause there is so much competition. Mm -hmm. like you said. There's a lot of competition in anything creative that you want to do. Yeah. You know, I do have several thoughts on that. Um, you know, one of the most important things to do if you want to become a bestselling author is you've got to finish your book and you've got to finish <laughs> over and over and over. And I have a lot of people write to me and say, I've got a great idea. I think it'll be a bestseller. How do I get an agent? And I'll say, well, is the book done? No. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, <laughs> publishers want to publish, you know, people who are going to write more than one book. So you, you have to learn the art of getting to the end of the manuscript and then editing well. And you have to do it over and over and over. And that's the very first thing that comes before marketing, networking, any of that author stuff. So you have to get in this time, this kind of mindset of of getting to the end and being okay with letting it go. It's hard to let that project go when you get to the end as well. I could pick at a book for, for years. Mm, I have yes. before, but that was before I was published. When you start getting on a schedule, you don't have that luxury. So that's one of the most important things. But I think, you know, once you get into the business and you get several books out and you learn kind of the cycle of, you know, the publication release and marketing and publicity and all this stuff, one of the most important things I think to having staying part power and continuing to keep your stories fresh is to continue to find ways to just love telling those stories. Because it's easy to kind of get discouraged along the way as the publishing world changes, or maybe this book release didn't go as well as you thought it would or as well as you hoped. I've certainly had that happen to me. And there's been so many days that Brian, my husband, has said to me, go have some fun. And that's when I go back to this idea of the roller coaster. That's what readers turn to fiction for. That's why they read novels. They read to escape, to go to someplace else and to live a different adventure in somebody else's shoes, which means I need to go and ride that roller coaster screaming and peeing my pants first, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so you have to continue to have fun and enjoy that and so that you can deliver the adventure that your readers want from you. I can, and I can mm. tell, you know, when, when you speak about your writing and your journey, I can see that love for what you do oozing out of you. And that is just... <laughs> wonderful to see 
Mm. How did you get your work translated into 17 languages? I mean, that is phenomenal. That's and congratulations mm. on mm. doing that. Yes. How did you well, get to that point? Well, thank you. I, I can't take any credit for that. That's something that my, you know, when you have a traditional publisher, um, and I'm traditionally published, they sell the rights. And so every now and then I get an email and they'll say, we, congratulations, we just sold Estonian rights or, you know, whatever. So um, I, I, and every now and then I get a copy of the translated novel in the mail. Not always, sometimes I stumble across the covers online or on Amazon and I'll see it and, and I'll be like, oh, cool. <laughs> 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 so I don't have a big part in that process. So that's kind of just luck of the draw. But you also have to sell the, the book has to sell in order for that to happen. Because right. if the book oh, isn't selling, <laughs> yeah, nobody <laughs> wants true. it, nobody's seen it, right? So it that's, has that to is be. true. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to just at this point before we go any further, Lillian's got uh, Lillian's watching us and she's got a very interesting question. Um, I'm gonna put it back on the screen here. Lillian asks, okay. is it wise to start talking about your book before you write it out? Mm. I think this is um, a really good question. And I, I will say just in general, kind of what I'm writing next, but I don't go into a lot of detail. And the reason I don't is because I feel like ideas are like little baby chickens, you know, and you can pet them to death. So you need to protect them a little bit. And you need to protect them also from um, the input and opinions of other people. Because, you know, as writers, um, you know, we need to write from that safe space, which is why I always say my number one rule of writing is to write as though no one will ever read it. And that's so that you can not worry about the judgments or opinions of other people. So I think it's nice to kind of keep those mm -hmm. things to yourself and treat it as a secret project that you work on in your closet with a flashlight in a notebook. Um, I think it keeps it fresh and it helps you stay bold and brave. And Erin wants oh, to know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Erin wants to know on Amazon, do you ever, and I, I'm sorry if we're blindsiding you with a question, no, but I'm going okay. to ask it anyway. Erin wants to know, do you ever do any giveaways of your books on Amazon? I have before. I haven't recently, um, but I have before. So, um, yeah, but I, I constantly am doing giveaways. So if you if you keep your eyes open, uh, you will see giveaways from me happening quite often. So awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So will you tell we talk about uh, you know? Well, tell us a little bit about Single Light and the line between and who did you write mm -hmm. it for? And do you have any mm -hmm. hidden game people? <laughs> game people okay do you have any hidden gems in there in the stories yes i do actually Yay. okay so i have them here so this is the line between mm -hmm. right there and then this is the sequel right there a single mm. light like the covers okay. i do too i really do yeah. um so i do the story, both of these books came out in 2019, right before the pandemic started. And it, it is a pandemic story. So sorry. That's kind of um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I, this storyline kind of combines two elements. Um, it's about a young woman who has been expelled from the doomsday cult that she grew up in. And so um, she's starting over in the outside secular world that she's been taught to regard as evil. And while this is happening, a pandemic is starting to sweep across the nation. Uh, unlike the current pandemic, this one came out of the melting Alaskan permafrost. And so this one started a little differently and is scary for different reasons. Um, I wrote this one just as a, a fun diversion, <laughs> a fun diversion for people not knowing that a real <laughs> pandemic was going to be started. It's a prolific, it was a prolific book, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it's been really interesting. It, uh, having spent all this time researching pandemics now, it's been, um, it's been an interesting last year, to say the least. But there is a little hidden gem. I hit a code in there. So mm. and that's my dog scratching in the background. I know, we I see hit a <laughs> beautiful, beautiful dog. <laughs> It's very popular on social social media and stuff. But he's um, I hit a code in there for people who who think they they um, you know might 
be able to pick it out and might be able to decode it. Um, and that's something that I think a lot of writers do. We hide Easter eggs in our stuff as we're writing, but this, this time I decided I would share it and make it, um, make it something fun people could look for. Fine. So that so that was that was totally by design, and it's funny that we're talking about the pandemic now, and you're writing, and you know, and then it actually launched the pandemic, yeah. for want of a better description. <laughs> um, okay, let's blame Tosca for the pandemic, shall we? No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, just, I sorry. Just, well, you just write something prolific that's like magical world. I don't know. And the sun is shining and everyone's healthy and write that next, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, after a couple things, like I read about this pandemic before the pandemic, I wrote this other novel about um, the descendants of Elizabeth Batheroy, who's the most prolific female serial killer of all time in history. And then I, I learned that I'm distantly related to her. So after all these things have happened, I keep joking that I'm going to write a story about a novelist who wins the lottery next. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you know, I, I, you know, should. I, was, I was gonna ask you, do you typically write about real life stuff or is it all fictional? <laughs> And you've just answered that question. I think it's fictional. <laughs> yeah. I I mean to write fiction. <laughs> that is yeah. so funny. Have you ever been told? I mean, do you have have you ever had someone tell you, you know, you're gonna write prolific things in your life or you have a gift for this or you know, a connection to the no. other world, if you want to call it? No. Write about that. <laughs> write about an author who everything they write comes true. <laughs> I know that's yeah. That'd be too scary. I that'd be too scary. <laughs> so where so where do you draw your inspiration from, Tosca? Like, what inspires you? What gets your creative mm -hmm. juices going? Like, you know, mm -hmm. do you have to have a cup of coffee in the morning? Do you write in the evening? When is the best time? You know, um, do you kind of just when you have a thought in your head, grab a pen and stop everything else? How does mm -hmm. your flow work? Well, you know, um, the line between and a single light were inspired by a news headline about a reindeer carcass that had thawed in the Siberian permafrost, and it happened to be infected with anthrax. And so even though this was a, a corpse of a dead animal, when it thawed, it, it made a nearby village ill with anthrax. And so I found that really fascinating and scary. And so that inspired the storyline for the line between. Um, now, my one of my other novels, The Progeny, the one about Elizabeth Batheroy, that was a fan who asked me uh, if I would consider ever writing a story about her. And I had just done a bunch of historical fiction, so I didn't want to do a straight historical novel. Um, so this is about her modern day descendants, and it's a thriller. But that was inspired by a fan request. Um, I've had, uh, it was an editor friend who suggested I write about Judas Iscariot. So that inspired my novel Iscariot. Um, mm. And so, you know, they just come from different things. And I have learned that if you have an idea, you have to stop and write it or put it in your notes on your phone or something right away. Um, because I always think I'll think of it later and I never do. No, so never even in the middle back. of the night. Yeah. And it's so inconvenient when you start to drift off and your brain is now free and loose and you know just kind of doing that thing before you go to sleep and and so many good ideas happen and it's such a pain to have to get up and write those down but I promise you you're not going to get them back <laughs> so I know yeah. I know use your use your voice recorder we were talking about that uh with um Gassant weren't we Bergetti and um yes, we about were. Yes, that, you know, you have to write it down. You need that notebook by that notepad mm -hmm. by your bed or your voice recorder or whatever, because yeah, it doesn't come back the same. And if you try, you're just like, oh, that doesn't sound as good. Gosh, what did I say before? Yeah. Or what were those words? You can't capture the yeah, magic I the know. same. And let me tell you, after turning 50, it really doesn't come back the same. So <laughs> the older you get, the no. more you have to write <laughs> we're, we're in the 50 club with you. I know. Yeah, yeah, we're so. in the 50 club with you, 50 and over. So yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> wow, I can't remember it all. It's like it went in and went out like a flash of light, you know? <laughs> I can't remember what I wanted it's to amazing. eat for lunch. So you've got to write that stuff down. And, you know, that said, too, I used to, I used to write a lot at night. That used to be my time. And I, I think 
every now and then I still do that. But when, when I married my husband, I also became a mother to um, three out of four of his children who still live at home. So I became an instant mom. And so I don't stay up as late as I used to. Um, so I have to, you know, capitalize on that time during the day. And I think it's really important as writers to really know yourself and to know your bio rhythms and know when you're most alert and most creative and to carve out those times and make them happen Absolutely. according to how you work best. Yeah. It's important to know yourself. Tell us, can you share a quick tip with, um, any aspiring authors, anybody wanting to up their game, um, could you share something that will help them with a strategy or with compelling storytelling? Because not everyone can write a compelling story that captures the audience. Do you have a formula? I don't have a formula, but, you know, there's a couple places that I continually turn for inspiration. Um, one of my favorite writing books is Writing the Breakout Novel by Donald Moss. And it's a wonderful book, and he has a wonderful workbook that goes with it. Um, so that's a favorite of mine. There's some wonderful books by Stephen James and James Scott Bell. And those are, are wonderful resources as well. Um, I do hire uh, editors independently on my own. That's just an expenditure that I budget for every single year and every book I write. Um, because as the editors go through my manuscripts before I turn them in, not only do they get cleaner, but I continue to learn to how to write cleaner, better, sharper, and tighter along the way. And that helps right. me um, with my skills. So that, and also I think, um, you know, it's always great to, to go learn from somebody. So any opportunity you have, to attend an event, a conference, or even to seek out a mentor is, is wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. all so important. And it just makes you a better writer, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then if you go from, if you go from doing like what you're doing to even writing in different genre or maybe ghostwriting, collaborating, it all helps you grow, which is just, mm -hmm. is only good for you to do. And, you know, and, and as a writer, you should, test your toes out in different genres. What's, what is easy for you? What is most challenging? What do you love to do? What makes you excited? Cause the more mm -hmm. you are excited about what you're writing that comes across in your stories and your books. And even if you're writing content for something, you know, an informational or, you know, gosh, if you're writing commercials, you know, if you're excited about it, then it's going to get everybody else excited and then you'll be more successful. I think that's absolutely right. And I think a big part of that is, goes back to knowing yourself. Because I think sometimes when we start out, we think we should write a certain kind of book or a certain genre of book, because this seems popular or it seems noble or whatever. But if you think you should write this thing, but what you secretly really love is this over here, well, you should be writing this over here, so. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining us. We We mm -hmm. have, really enjoyed having you here with us today and um, we can't wait to have you back. We're going to have to have you back on. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Absolutely. This has been amazing. Thank you so, so much, Tosca. Um, to thank our you. audience who've joined us live today, thank you for joining us. Remember to write good stuff and be inspired one conversation at a time. You're watching the Writer's Corner live show with Marion Brigetti and our guest today, Tosca Lee. Until next time, it is going to be goodbye for now. Take care, everyone.